Kia ora, year 11 and 12. This is the hardest question in the um, 2018 paper from question one. So it's the second excellence question, and it's all about a parallelogram. It has quite an intimidating looking diagram, but once you figure out what you're trying to find, it unravels pretty quickly. So the key is not to get freaked out to start with. Okay, so here's this diagram, and here's the problem. So I'm going to take a highlighter and highlight the keywords, which is a really good thing to do when you're looking at a tricky problem. So we've got a rectangle, and the rectangle is ABCD, and it's 10 by 8 centimetres. And inside the rectangle, um, we can draw a parallelogram, and the parallelogram is drawn in. Okay, so just going over the parallelogram, this is it here. Right, so let's just skim read what we've got to do. This next bit is the confusing bit, and if you look at the diagram, it's totally fine, but the words don't really help. So the parallelogram's inside the rectangle. Suppose that the distance from each corner of the rectangle to the next vertex of the parallelogram in a clockwise direction is x centimetres. Well, I'm really pleased they gave us a diagram, because I think that would be quite tricky to draw from the words. But if you look on the diagram, it's not so bad. So what we've got on here is we've got that this length from here to here is x, and this length here is x, this length over here from a to e is x, and I've lost one, just a sec, where's the other x? This is x, and this one down here is also x, okay, so each of these is x. Um, what we have to do, sorry, we've got piano now instead of violin, but never mind. We've got to use calculus to find the smallest possible area that the parallelogram can have. And then we have to justify that the answer is a minimum. So when you've got a problem like this, the key thing to do is to work out what are we going to, how are we going to find the area of the parallelogram. And we're also going to write on some missing lengths. So I'm going to use a different colored pen. I'm going to use a green pen for these ones. And let's see if we can easily figure out how long each of those bits are. Because we're probably going to use them. Okay, so here, this whole side is 10 and this is x. So the green bit in here is 10 minus x. And so is the green bit here. This is 10 minus x. The green bit in here isn't 10 minus x. It's going to be 8 minus x. And this green bit here is also 8 minus x. Right, so when you were back in year 9, you learnt a formula for the area of a parallelogram. And that was the area is equal to the base times the height. But the problem with that is that the h in here, so if I've got my parallelogram here, the h is the perpendicular height here. And we don't know that very easily for our parallelogram. So instead, what we're going to do we need to find the smallest possible area of the parallelogram. We're going to figure out what's the area of the rectangle, and then we're going to take away these four green triangles. Oh, it's like colouring in when you're a little kid, right? This is quite fun. So I'll just finish this off, because I think it's going to help you see what to do. All right? so instead of um, looking at the parallelogram area directly, we're going to look at it as the area of the rectangle, minus four very easy to find triangles. Okay, so what do I know? The area is equal to 80, the area of the rectangle, minus, well, it's half the base times height for the four triangles. Let's start with this triangle here, this one here that I've just erased. Well, we know the height is 8 minus x, and we know the base is x. So the area of that triangle is half of x times 8 minus x. And this triangle up here has got the same dimensions. Okay, so let's put those two in first. We've got area, pen's not working right, area is equal to 80 minus two of those triangles, which have area of a half times x times 8 minus x. Now, what about the next two triangles? Well, this one here is, uh, what have we got? Well, we've got 10 minus x, 
and x. So it's going to be half that base times that height. And we've got two of those triangles. So it's going to be minus two lots of half the base times the height. So you can see that my expression for the area of a parallelogram is getting easier by the second. So we've got 80 minus x times 8 minus x minus x times 10 minus x. So it's 80 minus 8x plus x squared minus 10x plus x squared. Right, so cleaning all of that up, we can rewrite that as a quadratic, and the area is equal to 2x squared minus 18x plus 80. So that's my expression for the area of the parallelogram. And we want to figure out when it will be the smallest. So what we're going to do there is to say, well, for a minimum, we need to have the gradient we need, need, we need dA by dx is equal to zero. So we're going to solve that. So we've done all the hard work in this question really. Now we're going to go dA by dx is equal to 4x take away 18, which equals zero when x is equal to 4.5. So that's the value that's going to give me a minimum. Now we could check that it's a minimum um, by finding the second derivative, which is d squared a by dx squared, and that's 4. And since that's positive, we have a minimum. All right, so I haven't taught you that if you're just watching this video and you're in my class this year, but that's called the second derivative test. Right, but we haven't finished the problem because look what we were asked to find. We had to find the smallest possible area, and we had to justify that it was a minimum. Okay, so we've done the justifying part, justifying that it's a minimum. That's one way to do it. Um, the other way that we could do it is to say that the area of the parallelogram is a, is a quadratic, so it has this shape, and you can see that the only turning point in there is a minimum, so that's method two. But we've got to take x equals 4.5, and we have to substitute it back to get the area Right. So don't forget that, or the most you're going to get is merit, and that would be a bit of a shame because you've done all that hard work. So a is equal to 2 times 4.5 squared minus 18 times 4.5 plus 80, and that equals 39.5 centimetres squared. So there you go, but before you stop, I want to go through the steps that we did to attack this problem because it's pretty classic. Um, it's a pretty classic example of what we call optimization or finding a min or a max. So let's go all the way back to the start, and I'm now going to get rid of a whole lot of this drawing. All right, so first of all, we read the question, and we read it quite carefully. We marked on some extra dimensions that we didn't have. All right, so we were given a good diagram, and then we set up an expression for the area. So we got a equals blah blah blah. And in this case we did that um, not by working directly with the parallelogram, but by working with the rectangle minus the bits that we didn't want. And that's quite a nice strategy in harder problems. Okay, so we got an expression for area, and then we said for a min or a max, we must have the derivative is equal to zero. So we found that and then we solved that, and we got x equals blah blah blah, and then we took that x equals blah blah value, and we chucked it back in to the expression. And the last thing we did was we did our justification. And in this case I used the second derivative test to do that, but there are a couple of other options. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Um, as I said, there are often excellence questions like this. The best place to find a whole lot to practice is in um, the theta book in the applications um, questions in the calculus chapters.